Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube. Welcome to Jibber Jabber. I am your host, as always, Skajaramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift. With me today, we have a relatively full roster. Well, not even close, actually. We only got like four people aside from me. First up, we have Lumina Starlight. Look pork ramen. Yes. Next up, over in the British corner, we have Darkness. I am here, and I am suffering, but live. We all are. Standing in the background and staring into your soul, we have a paladin. Hey, kids, want to see dead body? Not <laughs> especially. Especially not from someone who can't do the voice at all. Come on, man. I'm doing my own version. That's not how that works. <laughs> your own version own is parody. not that good. And lastly, we have also in the British corner, Tom 117Z. So, how's everyone's week been, huh? <laughs> All right until Friday and Saturday. <clears throat> Sunday's 50-50. Yeah, we, my, my week's been good up until about uh, three hours ago. So, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to, to explain that, we got to launch into our very first subject, which is the FFD6 recap. We didn't have Jibber Jabber last week. Because we were having a boss fight in that week's session of FFD6 that took us like a solid extra hour of playtime to defeat. Sorry. Yep. So, to, to recap the last two sessions, when we get to the second of the two, you'll understand why the last three hours have been kind of <laughs> for me. And the rest of us here, who participated in that. Um, but first, the good stuff. So... To sort of recap what happened before all that, the party has been working for quite some time, the last five or so sessions, to accumulate the shit they need to track down DeviaCorp, the nefarious underground Magitech corporation, quite illegal, that were responsible for the creation of Rocket and the killing of her father figure, Dr. Lazarus. They've been, they've run on a few separate little errands and missions, including running to Costa del Sol and running around at Endlum to acquire the parts they need to find a device that will let them track down DeviaCorp's central lab. While they were tuck while they were bunking bedding down for the night to sleep away and wait for Sid, their ally and engineer companion, to finish putting together said device that they could use, they found themselves being attacked in the middle of the night. A sniper attacked them from outside, shooting Rocket, knocking her unconscious in a single hit, damn near killing her, and causing everyone else a great deal of tension. It was a fantastic fight, all things considered, which started with the party frantically running throughout the building, trying to figure out where the sniper was, where he was shooting from, while trying not to get hit in the process. It was a very tense sequence, and I loved it a lot. Following that, the, they eventually located the sniper, and with a bit of a... And with a bit of luck, we're able to get in a couple hits, even with that distance, which compromised his position and forced him to engage the party more directly. And after a long and protracted battle, they were eventually able to subdue the sniper, who uh, apparently was actually part of Rocket's backstory, an individual who had been hired on multiple occasions to try and hunt her down and bring her back after she initially fled from Devia Corp before she met the party, you know, in Marasu. This individual's name is Roland, and he is a mercenary. The party had a long, drawn-out battle with him before eventually kicking him into the dirt and taking him down. Whereupon he was taken prisoner and hauled off back to the castle to be taken prisoner for multiple counts of murder, assault, attempted murder, and property damage. The following day is where the crap session starts, which is the one we just got done with an hour ago. Uh. Yeah, it wasn't that great. <laughs> For reasons that aren't necessarily tied to the events of it, but more just how th everything around the events unfolded out of character. Yeah, what unfortunately. More, yeah, my... yeah, what wound up happening, I'll cover the events and we can talk about why things went south when I get done recapping the events. Fo shortly following okay. Roland being captured and hauled off to the to the castle in Endlum, the party were given clearance, you know, they were, you know, they, they were cleared of any wrongdoing from the whole disaster and were told, all right, you can go about your own business. They went up to the castle to try and interrogate Roland, question him, figure out what they could from him, and he was quite adamant that he doesn't work for free, that he won't you know, necessarily turn his back on his employers without this pretty serious incentive, and eventually gave the proposal of if they pay his bail and get him out, he'll tell them whatever they want to know about Deviacorp's central lab and facility. The problem is his bail is 20,000 gil, 
which is a lot more than the party currently has. Like, four times more, if not more than that. So the party eventually decided to abandon that plan. But they... but. Concerns among them are rising rapidly about Deviant Corp's influence, and with that influence, how risky the amber they are, they supposedly have in their possession is going to be if they are left unchecked. And so, resolved to try and resolve this matter as quickly as possible and take Deviant Corp down once and for all, they handled a couple of small errands across the city, mostly sending letters to friends and family in other parts of the world by making use of the Endlum Post Office, to try and notify them about the situation and just check up, make sure everything's all right. And then they all went back to Sid's manufactory to sleep for the night. Following that, Sid called everyone forward and showed them that the device they would need to track DV Corp was finally complete. A tracking beacon of sorts that would beat more rapidly the closer they got to the origin point of the Central Lab's broadcasts, essentially. With that in mind, the party got their shit together, hopped onto the Stargazer, and set off for the Suto Forest, where they know DV Corp's lab is somewhere. But the specifics, they don't know yet, and searching that entire forest would take way too long without a means of narrowing it down, which they now have. On the way, in the latter half of the journey, something very different happened, because Rocket wound up getting contacted in her sleep by none other than Diabolos himself, the main villain of the whole campaign, if you will, the god of darkness and a freaky devil-looking motherfucker. He proceeded to point out that he found the party's actions to be amusing and entertaining, that they had, that they had done enough to actually grab his attention and interest, and that he was now watching them. He also accompanied this with several grotesque images within the nightmare of Rocket and all of her closest friends and dearest loved ones being killed in brutal ways and the world being laid to waste and all that happy crap that villains like to do, before eventually leaving her with some cryptic words and waking her up in, in a frenzied panic back aboard the Stargazer with the rest of the party. The party, unsettled by the fact that Diabolos is even alive and capable of contacting people in their dreams, settled back down with a bit of help from Mika's sleep spell to get some rest and hopefully be well refreshed for the battle with Deviant Corp that's coming. That's where we I'm left glad off. I suggested that. Yeah, and you may ask what went wrong. I well, mean, in then. that recap, it almost sounds half decent. <laughs> exactly. That's because well, in, that's because to... that's because if you discount all of the arguing in character, if things went fine, it's out of character where everything kind of went to shit. <laughs> so uh, why don't the rest of you talk about that? Because you're in a better position to do that than me. Indeed. Tom, why don't you start us off? <laughs> do, do, I mean, do we want to start with that, or do we want to start talking about the good session? Uh, uh, why don't you start talking about the good session? Like, let's just go about it in order. Good idea. Yeah. So first off, the excellent session that was last week where we started <laughs> off, Mika had just come back and we had an entire section where we were free to do what we want. And because Mika had just come back, we had the perfect little thing to kind of explore and we decided to go to a bar and get reacquainted with Mika and then to some nice little character moments where we left Thanatops in the ditch, basically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you all keep picking on him. He, he picks on us. <clears throat> so he kind of, and of course, he, he starts it. Then later, <laughs> fucking one shot rocket, which is completely unexpected and like yeah. just literally made me just go on pale and like wondered yeah. what the fuck just which happened. Was unexpected. Like we just come from a scene where we're talking with Mika. It's kind of like hard and jokey. A uh, bit flow between me and her, getting like reacquainting, catching up on everything that's been going on. She finds out about like everything that happened, more in depth what happened to the Tomberries, aside from what I told her in that five minutes we met before. Um, I can imagine the audience's reaction to that. Oh, what this was that other thing? Funny. She, Next she scene. Was, <laughs> what was that other thing she was really surprised about that we informed her of? I don't remember. Uh, neither do I, but yeah, there was a couple of revelations that. And stuff mm. going on. Oh yeah, uh, also we talked about the squishy. Um, the squishy. The squishy. She liked the squishy. squishy. <laughs> so everything went fine there. Then, then this like a, a red dot sight starts coming on. There's like, that's like a sniper sight. Bang, that's a sniper. 
Okay. <laughs> Rocket got shot and almost died in one hit. Yeah. Ooh. So we Which dragged we her out to her aid. Hey, everyone, get her back in bed. Oh, also, um, me and Mika were sharing a bed, so yep. that got them <laughs> attention. Yeah. Stop making that sound right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, sorry, I was clapping with my Wi-Fi box. <laughs> Well, it sounded like you were to making some other insinuation, and I don't think anyone here likes it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I do. <laughs> yeah. So that, snip, snip. They were sharing the bed for the first time, and it was very awkward and ad adorable. Um, as it always is with those two. Yes, as it always is. It's great. Mm. Uh, uh, in bed. But whatever, whatever this encounter will be in the future, uh, that was interrupted with Rocket's situation. Dragged her around to the hallway. Ni nee and Sid went downstairs to gather some Phoenix down, so we've got some of those now. Ni nee got shot on the leg on the way back up, but healed up. Thanatos and Ni nee went back. Ni nee took yeah, a couple of shots. Like, Thanatos missed with a, 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 He didn't take a fireball at that time, did he? Um, I got either way, it, though. He used his night blade yeah. attack to try and land a hit, but it didn't work. He was too. Oh yeah, it broke broke the window, but it missed. But it illuminated him, so he was able to take a shot and just kind of hit him in the shoulder. At which point he retreated back, got into a mech, and decided to storm in. A more direct and approach. And come through the and yeah. come through the wall like the fucking Kool Aid Man. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you we were so insane so, that it was scary. But luckily, we managed oh, to take that shit. terrible thing down. Oh yeah, it went well. Like a shit ton of fire on our asses. <laughs> we opening tag Mika in an axe that me I feel greatly approves of because whenever me, Mika does something badass, me swoons. Um, <laughs> but like, don't uh, forget the most important. Yeah, the most important detail. It was uh, revealed that she was a red maid. We're not there on. yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> That's in the next fight. But <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Mika uses one of her new spells, summons all these winds, and kind of messes the thing up massively. And then we find out that its weakness is lightning, which is suitable since Neothil has just replaced her original dagger with a lightning dagger named Storm. So, Thanatos is casting lightning at it, Mika her wind, and then I'm just kind of shanking it a bit. And of course, Mika <laughs> also used the big ass ice spell on it, too. Yeah, like, like I'm pretty sure that's how thing. she opened it. I'm pretty sure that's where she opened up was she cast Blazara on it along yeah, with the... Arrow. Yeah, and yeah, eventually it got it got split in half, and half of it went through the wall into the next building, catching a fire. Mm -hmm. The dude got out of it. Roland got out of the mech and was about to make a run for it, and was apparently supposed to escape at this point until I prolonged the session by an hour by <laughs> using disabling shot and making it so he physically couldn't. Flee by game rules. <laughs> Whoops. Success. Which ended up on a next hour of boss fight, which in the universe took like a minute, where he <laughs> shot us up a bit, but we were pretty much bullying him the entire time, five on one. Not to mention where... competing us in the fucking face. <laughs> but Thanatos did, did Dark Knight very well and started absolutely kicking his ass with all these big shadow attacks and flinging him across the street. Like, he would be flung across the street, get up, flung across the street again. Well done, Thanatos. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Alistair was on healing duty for the most part. Yeah, Rocket got a good... Got a good kick to... Uh, was aimed for the nuts, but ended up hitting like, in the stomach, which also... His shin. Flying back shin because he blocked. In but his so... shin. Mm. Yeah. But shit. Mika got fed up and revealed herself to be a red mage by summoning a sword and just doing a summoning the sword out attack. of her book. Like it was actually kind of the cinematic yes. thing in my head. It's, it's a book sword. Yep. The pages channel all filter into the gem that has hmm. served that was been at the tip of the bookmark. And uh, from that gem, which sort of coils and binds itself around the spine of the book, uh, the blade emerges and the spine's been detached from the rest of the book for the cover. And the other parts of the cover, the binding, turned and morphed into sort of a rapier-style handguard. So, pretty badass, really. I heard the. I, heard I believe the one of the the quotes was Niga. Niga, I told you I love you only once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
And, and then, then the pen is mightier than the sword. In this case, the book is mightier than the Dark Knight. <laughs> and it's bigger than the Dark Knight, so we're kind of over that. Yep. It would be a bit of a window, but there you are. And then a, bit, a couple more attacks in, and then me got the finishing blow in by jamming Storm into the gun's barrel as he went to shoot. It explodes. She then grabs him by the collar and nuts him right in the face and knocks him up cold. Night, yep. night, bastard. Yep. <laughs> Proper British way to finish it, and nah, didn't, mate. <laughs> all in all, it was a pretty tense sequence. The bit when you were scurrying yeah. around inside mm. trying to avoid the sniper fire, that part was really tense, and I liked it. Can't wait to see what you do with that in the game. Is it going to yeah. be like a sequence where you need to stay out of a certain zone? If you stay too long, you get shot or something? Something to I that just... effect, yeah. We have to oh, find the fastest awful. route between cover, and if you're out for too long, you get one shot. <laughs> Yeah, I just love it when I got a destiny point for a little if I made it. Oh, yeah. We all got two destiny points. <laughs> you got three, and Lumina also got three because of her class. Mm. I be fair, I got the extra one for just making a little Griff a freaking Thanatos. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And the frozen right, one more destiny point, point, and I can I'll be able to use my limit break again without. Well, Going below eight because I don't want to do that because I'm paranoid about it. I want to cheat death, damn it. <laughs> and with that, we took a nice rest throughout the night. And then the and shit session, the session in. Before that, mm-hmm. any thoughts, Lumina, on the good session? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll share them. <laughs> or not. Uh-huh. Never mind. <laughs> we were asking you to share your thoughts, not if you, not just oh. if you had them. <laughs> I don't like Mr. Shooty Shooty Bang Bang. No one likes Shooty Shooty Bang Bang. Ooh ee ooh ah ah ting tang waddle bing bang. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, chipmunk. (laughs) And now, as of a couple hours ago, we get into this one where I think. The next, they're gonna, it's going to be two episodes as per usual. The first, second one's going to be just called Diablo since that was the actual good part, yeah. and then the, the first one's just going to be called the bad one. <laughs> the bad one. <laughs> Make, makes sense. Oh, boy, makes man. sense. What uh, happened? Well, Let's you were there, time. darkness. You know what happened. I think, I think it was well, rhetorical. I'm just be, I'm being rhetorical, mate. <laughs> well, yes. I, well, I have Asperger's oh, ADHD. It's not for me to tell. So. <laughs> Hold on, what happened? Let's go into detail, shall we? Okay. Well, I think we're all not in the best of mood. I certainly aren't. Although I did have a bit of enthusiasm, but unfortunately a few inconveniences interrupted it, such as technical difficulties, family matters. Yeah. Like that seemed to be the running the theme with the off. session. There was a constant just stream of technical difficulties interrupting us on all ends. Along with just general interruptions from people barging in on the on our on the players in their respective homes and calling them away for things, it, mm, it, it was dragging a, on a bit. Yeah, it was kind of a mess, all things considered. Mm. Like I, I, yeah, the, the, starting up, like entering the session was kind of fine. Like I was in a decent mood when, myself. I can speak for it when I entered, but uh, things really devolved from there. Like mm. at first I think most of us were expecting to very quickly start going down the Debut Corp road. Well I mean that was initially the plan, but Danatos decided he wanted to talk to Roland first and I had to accommodate that. Yeah, yeah. and I had to sit through an awkward conversation. Yeah. Mm. We'll get to that. But yeah, um so we go there like, oh we gotta do that. Okay. Let's go and talk to uh, Roland, then, which leads, uh, it's already right at first. There's a few basic uh, technical difficulties. Um, like, there's a couple of barbs thrown in character, and Mika gets annoyed at me. Uh, My fucking Wi Fi box glitching out, so it cuts you all yes. out for me. It's a pen in the ass. Yep. <laughs> and as usual, like, there's a bit of friendly bickering going on. The friendly bickering will become a bit too consistent in this session. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a little bit punny. 
Breaking yeah. the fourth wall, punny. The puns are fine. The puns are great. <laughs> yeah, but we did Says break you. the fourth wall a bit. <laughs> no, no, Lumina broke the fourth wall. The rest of you are fine. Oh, Rocket is allowed to do that. She's the mascot. I did one or two moments of breaking the fourth wall, I admit. I'm guilty anyway. of that. <laughs> We're all guilty. Anyway, so we move on. We go to Roland. We calm down with enthusiasm. Because he, he kind of wants to go down torture Alley, and we're like, no, don't do that. Because uh, we'll get us in trouble. Yeah. We get there, we're allowed to interrogate him. He's very pouty, McPout face that mm. he can't which torture. I will, which I will say, I understand where he's coming from, but I think it's a tiny bit out of character of, of too much torture from Thanatos. I mean, for one thing, if you look back on the times he does interrogate, he doesn't really do anything that's terrible to the person. No, no but... I mean, probably the most painful thing he'd done was yank on someone's hair, and that was it. Still. Mm. Yeah. Well, so we get there, and it's a verbal interrogation. We managed to make some headway, as in pointing out that an apocalypse doesn't really suit his financial future. Mm-hmm. Money is his main motivation. Mm. However, twenty thousand gil, ha, no, that's never happening mm. unless we're doing we five sessions of grinding. Mm. And then we get to the post office and knee and walk it. Yeah. Really uh, so we, but, I mean, from here, like, Fantastic. there's a bit of disagreement. At this point, the session still isn't horrible. Like, there's been a bit of bickering and a, a and some technical difficulties that has kind of frustrated a few people, but well, all of us. But mm. things are still relatively progressing. Mm. However, and then we had the, the jump to the post office scene because yeah. I mean, wanted to go somewhere. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting there. <laughs> because before, before the post office scene, then we had the scene outside where things were getting a bit poignant, like we were reflecting on just how massive things have gotten compared to what we originally thought, the potential mm. scope and the consequences of failure where I then uh, set up a scene because at this point I was also at slightly at feeling more at a loss of what to do because we had basically what was meant to be the rest of the session to, to do whatever but none of us really had a clue of what that meant because we'd already done everything that we wanted to do in our own time in the previous session with Mika and the bar mm. so we were we were kind of slightly lost. There was a lot of just moments of silence where we we're just trying to think, like, where do we go from here? I think eventually, would... sorry. So then eventually, I got, I had an idea, like, well, in during the interrogation, um, Nee brought up the point about how, well, it, we're talking about to Captain Philip, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, Captain Philip was saying how the sea had never seen anything like that. Like they know about the Amber Coast, but. It just seems kind of alien before it came so bad. Where me was going on about how life can seem rosy one minute, but the next it doesn't make sense in reference to, you know, how she was comfortable with Batea and then she's now out here doing all of this bullshit. Right. Weird. So thinking back on that, I got the idea that, um, well, like me was talking about that, which would logically make her start thinking about our family and everything that's happened and plus with the conversation we're just having about the scope of everything they're like why not have a like write a letter and just start wanting to get into contact with them for the first time since she left of Batea which I thought would mean like a poignant scene especially when Alistair and Miko are both like yeah we want to contact our families too and then Thanatos is kind of getting and upset about his lack of a family and went off of Rocket. So, and while the other three went down to the post office, which I was hoping yeah, we'd get a kind of point scene between the three where mm. like, say me gets emotional about the family thing and I'll see the others and they talk about it and it'd be great. And then yeah, I hear the words, good, yeah. we're going to ignore the post office because nothing interesting happens in the post office. Well, I legitimately I mean, thought that if you wanted to really focus on scene, you could have just said so, and I would have been happy to ch to actually let you have that, just as a heads up. I know, but it, it just, I was deeply trying to imply, I thought you got where I was going, but you were more interested in focusing on... 
Let me Rocket, put it this sorry, way. I don't I'll, do. I'll, 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 I do I'll, not. I do not do subtle hints. I cannot. Men cannot detect subtle hints. Just as a general rule. Uh -huh. We don't do that. So be direct with me moving forward. If you want to have a scene, just say it and do it. Well, yeah, but so we got to Thanatos and Alice, uh, not that Thanatos, uh, Rocket. <laughs> I know, Back in Sid, Sid's place, um, where it initially started really awkwardly because, I mean, they didn't really know what to say because, like the rest of us, they're kind of at a loss. Like, what are we actually doing anymore? And things have really started to unravel now. However, things momentum starts to pick up again. They start talking. The scene starts getting really good. And then Hades' dad comes into his room and Mass starts asking Mass to, the do stuff. to do chores. Yeah, Just yeah. In the middle of a fucking yeah. session, which completely ruined the scene, just outright. Yeah, because he had to go back and then. While he was off doing that, we cut to the post office. Was like, yeah, this is my chance. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I'm sorry, I cut, like, and I'm sorry, I cut you off from that. I am actually thinking. About yeah. It. yeah. Al and Alice uh, started off that I don't know how to write a letter, which was funny. <laughs> yeah, Alice I mean, I was gonna do like I was gonna write like a letter to my family and my old master, but I was so out of track. I thought. Yeah, but then right. at the time, I was a bit out of track, so I thought, you know what? This could be the first time Esther ever write a letter. This might be funny and amusing, and then maybe we get to what Nee was going to do in this time. Yeah, it, was, then, it, was, it was funny, like a, a nice moment. Yeah, and then like, Mika goes off to, to help Alice and it's kind of amusing. And then Nee goes back to her letter, like, yeah, I, it's the moment time to start writing. And back, and back to Thanatos and Rocket. <laughs> yeah, because he returned. Where I, I quickly interchanged what the PS line was going to be, which was because at the end of that uh, emotional scene, I was going to end off on the punchline of PS, by the way, I met someone, don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I'm still I looking to... forward to that. You yeah, we'll see if anything comes of that. I got to write the letter. Mika. You get to introduce Mika to your sister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll, that'll be fun when we get to that. But yeah, so we then jump back to Thanatos and Rocket, but at this point the, the rhythm has been completely gone, so they're just kind of stuttering and silent, and then the scene just kind of yeah. is cut short. They lost track. It, yeah. it happens. Thanks, Hades is dead! I want to punch you on the dick yeah. now! So that scene's ruined. The mojo. Yeah. I didn't get to do my thing with the letter, so that's kind of just been glossed over. And at this point, it's a bit late. Like, well, it, it's all fucked now anyway. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it's like, all right, fuck it. We're days over. We're all in bed again. <laughs> yeah. At which point, I think we're all frustrated, annoyed, not having fun, and yeah. Personally, mm. at this point, I was like, hope wanting the session to end. Yeah, so that mm. we could pull our shit together and do better next time. Yeah. yeah. So but, with that in mind. But but I wanted okay? us to end on a high note, at least. I wanted there to be something in this damn session worth a damn, so Yeah, so like we wake up the, the next governance. day. Oh. Yeah. Sid had his science thing. Um we started off like, alright, we're gonna we talked some more about um Roland, we decided not to do anything with him. I probably will include that scene in the transcript, I'll just kind of modify it slightly so it's just all about it's just more dramatizing it and trying to make a decision of whether to release him for this or not, and then deciding not to mm. make something more out of it. Um, mm. But yeah, and then it kind of the, the big highlight of like the dysfunction, like as we got more and more frustrated how like our usual friendly bickering that we do sometimes over like decisions and what we want to do, how as we became frustrated and annoyed with this session, like it just became genuine bickering throughout every single decision anyone in our party was making no matter how small like when it was like all right we're going to head to the airship now so we can head off and then it was like five ten minutes of bickering about going to the airship <laughs> which was five feet away yeah <laughs> like just the like was... everything just went wrong essentially <laughs> yeah there's mm. so much bickering going on we finally got to the airship we head head off like you have any in 
you asked us if we had any interactions we want to do, at which point none of us spoke up because we were all done with this. Yep, pretty much. Mm. But then we got the one legitimately excellent scene in the entire session, which was Rocket and Diabolos. Yeah, and, 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 and get this, I wasn't a- even initially planning on having Diabolos do that shit until after you were done with Deviacorp. But ultimately, I figured, fuck it, I need something good here, so I just nudged it back a bit. Something so that this that something actually happened in this session. Mm. Yeah. That wasn't, I couldn't, you know, just be left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. And that is the episode that's gone wrong. I have a legitimate headache. Yeah, it, 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 like, just everything surrounding the entire session went wrong, and a part of it is my fault. I admit that freely. I should have probably figured that I should have given you guys a bit more of a concrete direction. I mean, I, I honestly thought the shit with Roland would take longer, and that there wouldn't be as much awkward shit, because you guys are normally really good about filling the time with just random character interactions that are meaningful. I know, but you, I mean, usually in, like, for example, in the, uh, Back in Marasu, like right after the whole Saran thing, and we were waking up, like we had a lot of things to like to derive from and to build upon because we've just been through this horrible shit. We're all dealing with it, so we could all go out and explore how our characters would be dealing with this. In this, it was more that we just last session we opened last session with an open interaction thing, and we opened this session with an open interaction thing in the exact same place with nothing new. Yeah. So we didn't have much take from, and it was partially our fault as well for getting us frustrated. show we did and bickering a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, just... and sorry but, for all that noise. Yeah, yeah but, part, but part of the responsibility does lie with me for even allowing the situation to evolve in such a way that it could happen like that to begin with. I mean, I'm the, I'm the game master. Mm-hmm. It's my job to make sure you guys have some fun shit to do. <laughs> if I can't do that, then I'm not doing my job right. Mm. It's okay. But... I mean, it's... It is literally very hard to make everything work every time. Mm. There's always that one episode. Yeah. This is that one bad episode that will be from season eight that I forget the name of. I I sent you the thumbs, Tom, by the way, for the Mm. new episodes. I saw. I saw. Mm. Did you see how I modified 52? (laughs) Mm. With that in mind. (laughs) Just noticed, yes. Yeah, mm. I made a little edit to the thumbnail for uh, the first of the two uh, session for, or the first of the two episodes for this most recent session, so that it looks like Rocket has googly eyes and her tongue is sticking out. <laughs> to, nice. em- to emphasize that everything yeah. went wrong, I'll dr- I'll I'll go ahead and just drop it in Discord chat, and I'll see if I can wiggle it into the into the jibber jabber chat so that the audience can actually see it. Give me a oh, second. Oh, there here. it is. <laughs> the bad one. Yep. Like it. But with that in mind, let's move on to a much stronger note. Well, hang on a second. I can't change the topic text at the moment. Should have stopped responding. Because of course it Uh has. Not again. Uh, May need to restart your computer. I don't know. No, No, not in the middle of this. Definitely not right now. Not right now, but... Mm. Ah, there it is. I think we have like around 30 minutes of Crimson Story, I believe. Something like that. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what I did to Rocket's face for the audience if you want to look. But uh, we're not here for that. So are you sure you're totally up for the crimson shit there, Darkness? Because you sound kind of sleepy. And a sleepy darkness does not an engaging story. Oh, make. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not sleepy. I, I just got a bit of a rough voice. But don't you worry. I just took down a spoon of honey. I'm golden. I'll take your word for it. So we're moving on to the second topic for the day. Was it golden honey? The continuing Thank adventures you. of Crimson <laughs> yes. the Dragon. <laughs> The man, the golden pun. <laughs> okay, quick as we cap, because it's short and we need to move on from that pun. Thank you, Paladin. And all the depressing stuff. You gave me the material for it. You have nothing but yourself to blame. I don't think that's how that works. Eh. <laughs> I, mean, I say look, your I... logic is 50-50. I wouldn't even say that. Sometimes. <laughs> And that's the best he can do. But anyway. <laughs> what was I? Oh, yes. Quickest recap ever, because it was like only like five minutes or less. Crimson is now undercover in a secret mercenary organization that's taken place outside the, in- the town they are currently in. Apparently, they deal with the most important shit. Unlike the other town. But also, the guy she's with is the one that pointed a bow and arrow at her back at the old fortress when they had 
the second boss fight with a powerful mage in a dark blue robe and a staff. So, this is where it continues. Mm. And as they were walking for quite the distance, they finally come across a small camp, which seems pretty much abandoned, all except they heard a noise in the distance. Sounds like something's being sharpened. A disappointing look was on the mercenary's face, and Crimson was curious why. Okay, what's put you in a bad mood, and why is there a loud sharpening noise in the background? There's only one man I know that will do the, that excessive amount of be sharpening his weapon, and that is Victor. And who is he? Unfortunately, the guy in charge of this little operation, ever since our old leader has mysteriously disappeared. Is he dangerous? You have no idea. I don't trust Victor for a moment. The guy always had that look about him, that he is the one to not to be messed with, not to mention, he's a big ass fucking orc who's not to be to be taken lightly of being stupid because he's actually quite intelligent, which is probably the most dangerous thing about him. Okay, then. Hmm. And there's a warning again. Sorry for the name, but I have confirmed it. And now I shall continue. Ah, where well, is it in my little... What? What was it? Uh... You cut out for a second. God damn it. Technical difficulties. Whereabouts did I cut out? Well, you'll cut like just a second to see was like, this is guy saying, Arthur, isn't my little... And then oh, you stopped. I see. It was like for like just a second, so... Actually, for us, you're cutting out, or at least on my side. Yeah, I hear that. Hmm. Okay. Nothing seems I to be capable of going right, does it? Nope. Let's just try to roll with it, I guess. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for the cutting out. We're just having some issues today. Technical issues, please stand by. Right? Thank you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Isn't it my little human friend? What was your name again? Beanie, Barney. It's Brian. Oh, right. Of course. <laughs> Must have been quite a long time since we last met. You seem to grow a little bit of fur upon your face. And I thought you were dead. Haven't seen you in a long time. And where's the others? <laughs> Unfortunate, really. They didn't make it. I had to deal with a great, huge, savage beast. And the poor bastards didn't stand a chance. Yet, you came out of it unscathed. Ah, I am a, a professional in my work. And besides, nothing's going to take me down without a fight. Ribbiting. Who's this? A new recruit? Um, that's a good point. What is your name? Oh, um, Clara. Clara. Well, pleasure to meet you. Is she going to disappear? <laughs> or, like, be forgotten? <laughs> like, scatter herself across someone's timeline and save them every single time, be forgotten in the process? Or something? Well, this is Crimson, and she took an undercover I, name. I know, I'm making a Just... Doctor Who joke. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. It's not that Clara. <laughs> oh boy, thank goodness it ain't that Clara. <laughs> uh, mm. I kind of miss that Clara. Mm. It's gone. Yep. Anyway. Mm. Well, Clara, can you hold yourself in a fight? Well, I have got these swords, so yes. <laughs> It takes more than just weapons to defeat your opponent. It takes intelligence, which most of these bloody mercenaries don't have. 
Otherwise, they'd still be here today. But don't worry. Stay close to me, and I assure you, fine. Yeah, I don't take my chances with you. I look out for myself, thanks. <laughs> Your funeral, dear. <clears throat> Just don't, okay? I know he's frustrating to be around, but best not. <clears throat> See that weapon he has there? You get hit with that. You'd be surprised to get up from it. Right then. We have a little assignment. What is it this time? Oh, some beast has been attacking a local town. If they want us to go and annihilate it. Promise a nice hefty reward as well. Hmm. I'm surprised you haven't taken it. Oh, I have. But someone also needs to deal with another problem in the town. And I think, because you're such a natural at it, you can handle the boring stuff while I handle the more exciting. How does that sound? In other words, you're doing the job half naff, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm dealing with the big threat. You deal with the little thing. Good at that, human. <laughs> Catch you two later. Okay. I know he's big. And he has a dangerous weapon. But why do you think that's a good enough excuse why I don't impale him and cut up his insides? Trust me. Just don't, okay? I've seen how this guy fights. You do not want to mess with him. Let's just, let's just get this town over with. So they went there and they weren't expecting this form. Welcome. A holy man speaking of some great divine who was also a little bit strict on it, his faith. And for some reason, doesn't like to accept help from strangers, even though the town needs this help because it's in a terrible state. Like, people are going hungry, there's hardly any enough medicine to go around, and there's clearly something wrong. But this guy seems completely fine, and claims if they pray to this so-called being hard enough, and of course, give him offerings, they would be completely fine. So let me get this straight. You are taking stuff from these people to give to your guard? Indeed. For you see, only if we give, we'll actually be rewarded. Yeah, I... Forgive me, but that sounds a bit like a scam to me. Excuse me, sir. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like I just want to disrespect your faith. And the fact that I don't really believe in any such things like that, but... You are conning these people. You are taking the gold, the food, even the water. For what? For faith? Everyone needs hope in this world. For these are dark times. And you're the man to give them this hope. I am Father Abbott. I am always white. For I speak in his name. And who is this being's name? He hasn't really got a name. For he is everything. He is order. And he will decide our fate. That sounds like a scam. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a scam. <laughs> Believe what you will. But he could smite you down at any time. Really? I thought your being is all peaceful and honest and will never harm a living thing. That sounds like you're over-contradicting yourself. Do not question his will. Do not question his word. I question everything. Why? And besides, if he is will... And if you say he smite me down for me being a heretic, then let him strike me down. 
are you asking for a death sentence? I'm just asking for proof. Come on, show me a miracle. I would pray to him to at least go easy punishment. Oh, I just stand right here then. Although, should I have a weapon on me or not? You know what? Nah, I'm going to leave it here. Come on. Show me. Ballsy. But with good reason. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I pray to one who gives to all and also shows us kindness. To show kindness to this sinner and not give him such a terrible punishment, spite his blasphemy words. But it's show him proof that you exist. Um, is something meant to happen? It, um, he's probably deciding your fate as we speak. Please be patient. You're on hold. Please wait. <laughs> Cue elevator oh. music. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Priestman, but it turns out that your god is nothing but a and you are a con artist. You will be smited double for that. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think your jig is up. Unless... Unless what? Hey, newbie! Clara, is it? Hmm? Have you found any mystical miracles? No, but I did found this guy who I currently knocked out. For some reason, he has a book of spells on him. Huh? Um, Got him. <laughs> I don't know who this man is. Oh, really? Tell me, what is in the book? Shut up. Wrong hmm, let's answer. see. Spells on... Let's see. Oh. Spells to basically lift things up. Spells that falls of lightning. Hmm. Spells that also claim to have Mm-hmm. Yeah. So from the sounds of it, these are the similar abilities this so-called god has. Mm. What a convenient thing. This book has the exact same things that your gods do. Uh, uh, face good? it, man. You're a fraud. I suggest you leave this town now before the good folks of this people find out that you're nothing but a lie and a fake. If you want to leave here alive, I suggest you give back the stuff because I think they're going to tear you apart. No. Don't listen to them, my good people. Uh, He's a liar. Right. He is trying to frame me. I was the one who restored balance. I was the one who also kept you safe. And kept the blighted way. You know, you speak a lot of this blight and other stuff, but how are you helping the people if you're taking from the people? You know, this reminds me of that Starlight episode when the party, the main six, finally meets Starlight. And the uh, picks her apart until she passed to run away. Kinda. Yeah. Hmm. Back uh... when she was a villain. Mm. <laughs> yep. Well then, convenience all around. Anyway, who are you going to believe? The people that expose this fraud, who he is? Or a man that's just lying just to make an easy living off you all? Is it true, Father Abbott, if that's even your real name? Have you been deceiving us this whole time? Uh -uh. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't. I assure you, that all of your belongings have belonged to our great Lord and Savior. You mean these belongings that you've been hiding in this carriage here? Yeesh. It looks like you want to leave this place very fast with it, don't you? Let's see what we've got in here. We have gold, food... Now, why would you want priceless art like this? 
or your even your guard, for that matter. You listen here. You want to know the truth. Well, if you're capable of the truth. <laughs> that's, that's, that is a good point. <laughs> this world is royally fucked. It's done. I'm just trying to survive. So you're whopping off the innocence to prolong your life. And tell me, why do you think this? There's one thing I have not lied about, and that there is a terrible blight. A blight that has been crossing across this entire world we live in as we speak. Each and every moment, the forces of death are upon us. The dead never get a chance to rest, for the wise to serve a new opposing threat. A threat that we will never prevail or defeat. Take my advice. Leave what you can and try to survive. And end up like an asshole like you. I take my chances with the people, thanks. Then you are a fool. Nope. I believe in hope. Which clearly you don't. <sighs> and now I think about it. I don't want you to leave. You're gonna kill me? No. You're going to suffer for your crimes another way. You're going to jail. No. Oh. And how do you suppose you're going to live? <laughs> you actually got somebody to defend yourself. I have a knife and I have a sword. Let's see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, underestimating a knife wielder is not necessarily a good thing. If they know how to use it, they can fuck up a sword wielder just fine. A knife mm -hmm. is lightweight and can be used a lot faster. Mm. Let's see, you're so cocky. <clears throat> when I cut that disrespectful tongue from your mouth. You know, you talk a lot. And you don't realize the current situation you're in. What's that? See that I am right behind you. Now, can you make a can you make a move before I slit your throat, or do you want this other sword to go up in your? Orifice. Well, yeah. Your ass. <laughs> I take take the lady's word. She'd do it. She has quite a temper. Life. Victory you achieved. Think, you think of yourself as a hero? No, but I think of myself as the most decent person I could try to be. Fucking mercenary. You're in it for gold and nothing else. Oh, really? Well, you clearly don't know anything about me. And with that, the royal guards showed up and take him away. And as for his companion, also he was taken away while he was knocked out. But he also found something else. A boy that was traveling around with him who seemed to have terrible beatings on him. It appears this poor child was used and abused by this asshole. That's horrible. My goodness. What do you find, Clara? Take a look. Holy shit. What has he done to you, child? Many bad things. Why? When I do something wrong, he punishes me. Well, you don't have to worry about him. He's gone now. Bad man is getting what he deserves. Now, is your family here? Uh -uh. I don't have a family, so... That's sad. You're an orphan. Hmm. My goodness. Hmm. What do we do? And at this point, the, the head member of the town came up to talk to him. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, and, uh... Who's the... Wait. Is that the kid that... Oh my goodness. 
What? What? So that's why I haven't seen him these last few days. Ooh. I thought something happened to him. You know this kid? Mm, all I know is he was like a... Like a, I guess, was a student or something to this guy when he showed up, but he was much in better condition for he went missing. Oh dear. Apparently, this poor kid hasn't got a family. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. Are you planning to do something with him? I would be honored to take him in, but I can't, I'm afraid. My line of business, too dangerous for him. Ah, I see. Well, we can't leave the poor boy state. If you're willing to take him in, in and accept him as one of your town members, he would be treated with good care, right? We treat him like he was one of his, like one of our own. You have my word on that, sir. What you've done. Which I'm quite surprised that you, you know, what, pity a child that's in need? I may be a mercenary, but I have feelings. Of course, I, I didn't mean to offend you. But anyway, we owe you a huge stantial reward for what you've done for this town. How does, um, 10,000 gold sound? Oh, jeez, that's a big number. 10,000 gold? Of course. You've seen him as a fraud and a lie that... I feel terribly, terribly bad for allowing him to do this to my town and everyone who lives in it. But don't, don't punish yourself. We all make mistakes. We're only human. Yes, of course. But anyway, you don't want to hear it about me. Huh, your, your rewards? Actually, that won't do. Huh? You want more? N no, I mean, I can't accept this much. But you saved us and you did the job. N look, it was just a deluded arsehole, okay? This is not really that much of a big deal. Um, tell you what, can I take only a fifth of that? A fifth, as in you only want 2,000 gold? Yes, 1,000 for me, 1,000 for my new friend here. Did you just call me a friend? Well, you did help me with the knife guy. I mean, he did have a freaking magical knife. Even I knew that from the start. I saw it sparkle a bit. And to be honest, I don't really have much against magic defense, but I was willing to give it a try. Do you cut in? Oh. So, would Thousand be okay for you? I suppose. <laughs> Are you sure? Positive. Look at your town. Look at your people. You need this gold more than I do. Please. Take 8,000 of it back. Help your people. Rebuild your town. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And on that charitable note, I think that's a good place for us to end. So, uh, we mm. haven't quite hit the hour mark, but uh, I don't think there's much else we can cover with the two or so minutes we have left. So, yeah, thank you all, ladies mm. and gentlemen, so much for tuning in to this episode of Jibber Jabber. We will see you next time, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you there. Keep listening, people. Bye. Tara. Bye. Ah. Here's hoping next mm. FFD6 is better than the last one.